In this tutorial, I want to explain to you how you can code your data in SPSS and then be able to run different kinds of analysis that you may want to run depending on the type of study you want to conduct. So I have opened SPSS already. This is an SPSS uh, interface and I have already collected the data that I want to code and then analyze. For example, this is an Excel file where I have already coded the data that I have collected. If you want to learn how you can collect your data using an online approach, you can check one of my videos where I explained how you can use Google Form to collect data online. This is a typical question there that I have designed, which I have used to collect data. This is actually what I have shared to people to respond. Uh, SA strongly agree, A agree, undecided, and, and then um, strongly disagree. So, and I have named the items 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 18 and more. And then you can see the items uh, that they are must have to emphasize that you need to ensure that your items are personalized. Very, very important. You need to ensure that you personalize your items because that will enable the respondent to, to say, I agree or I disagree or whatever the case may be. You can see here, you have the, the gender, male, female. Um, then here you can see gender one and two. You can see the age. So you can see the, you have the ages between um, 18 to 25, 25 to 30, 30 to uh, 30 and above, as the case may be. They will simply tick anyone that, anyone that applied to them. Then academic level, uh, 400, 300, so depends on, uh, depending on what the level, of the student's uh, academic level. So back to the SPSS, here you have the variable view where you, you can write letters. Here, this is where you can put in numbers, which is the, the data view. In the data view, you code the numbers. For example, one, two, three, four, and as the case may be, as the respondents uh, uh, ticked. And then I need to take you back here to this point. You know, normally this is always assigned five. Um, for example, I can come to this point and I need you to understand something here. That this is five, this is four, this is three, this is two, this is one. Okay, so um, yeah, so this is one. So in this particular case, anybody that marks SA, you code five. Anyone that marks A, you code four. Anyone that marks undecided, you code three. Anyone that marks uh, that T disagree, you code two. And anyone that that clicks on um, that says strongly disagree you simply code one in the variable view i'll come here and write item one so i like to code from item one to uh, the very first one so item two item three Please note that when you are coding, you're not supposed to have space. There's not supposed to be space under name. You see that variable name contain illegal character. So make sure you don't leave a space here. And then, so I will have to put them together. Item nine, 10. 11 because here I want to 
first code this so that is item 1 to 11 okay I would like to change this to zero zero decimal so that if I write one I'll be sure that I've written one so that it will not be displaying one point zero zero one point so so to avoid confusion at this point I have the values that I want so I'll click five value five and I'll put the label strongly agree and I will add remember that here when you have if anyone clicks SA that is five a which is agree four okay so that is what I want to instruct the SPSS so that once SPSS sees anyone who coded five SPS will automatically um, understand that the person says strongly agree. If the if it sees four, SPSS will understand that the person says agree. If it sees three, SPSS will understand that the person says undecided, and so on and so forth. So four agree, and then I will add three undecided two disagree and then one strongly disagree I will add okay I will say okay so I will copy this and simply paste them here instead of retyping them so that that will automatically save time for you Okay, so at this point, I will save my document, and I just want to save. I say tutorial data, and then I can select wherever I want to put it. For example, I like to put it on my desktop, my YouTube tutorial, something like that. And then I can I can just put it here. Another thing you may want to do is to put the labels down here. You can see the full meaning of item one so i will simply copy if i want and then i'll come to sps's under level and i'll paste them so that when you run the analysis they will come out clearly and uh, uh, you you will be able to understand what the meaning what what it meant here copy i'll come here Pest. That is, if you want to show the label, otherwise, you can simply go on with the analysis and then um, when you are done, but I just want to put them here so you don't get confused. So you can see item 4, this is item 4, and I go to SPSS and I put them here. So this is a very patient, um, a very patient and careful work. You need to be patient when you are coding. It can actually take uh, some time for you to, in order for you to do it well, diligently, um, to avoid mistakes and confusion. So you need to, you need to be patient here. okay so now you can see that everything is looking good on this uh, variable view and then I, I will have to come to data view okay here so you can see item 1 item 2 to 11 now for example if I could if someone here for example if this person says strongly agree for example if I want to code it by hand I can collect the the I can pick the questionnaire and then I say five that means the person says strongly agree okay so but I'm going to remove this because I already have the data in, in, the, in the 
in the Excel Excel sheet. Now let us also remember that that is a, we also have age, and then we have gender. Okay, so here, um, so under age, so under age we have um, we have twenty five years. 18 to 25 years under age so i will say one and i will put it here 18 to 25 and i will add okay um here i have i will, I will say two if anybody anybody ticked two then i will know that the person is between the age range of um 25 to 30 and same thing here if anyone says three, uh, SPSS will automatically know that the person is saying uh, that he or she is 30 and above. And then under gender, I will instruct the SPSS that anybody that clicks one or that ticks one, that SPSS should know that the person said is a male. Okay, it's a male. So this is male. And then two, this is female. This is female. And um, I will say, okay. Now that I have instructed, I will also save. Then I'll go to the data view. So this is where I'm going to put the the, the, the coding. So I'll simply select those of the age. Okay, up to the up to the last data, which is 294. I'll come to SPSS. I'll come under here. And I will paste. Okay, so you can see that I've already pasted that. Okay, then go back to item 1 to 11. Get to the last part of it. Copy. So I come here and then I paste. Oh, pretty good. So you can see uh, uh, we, we already have our data set here. And so if I want to know, if I want to check whether uh, SBSS clearly got the labels, then I will come here, value labels. I will come at this point and I will click to find out. So you can see that you can see here that this is looking pretty good so you can see undecided those that tick three you can see strongly agree 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 and, and uh, you know and stuff like that and so you can see here ages you can see 18 so this is there's a missing data here you can see here there's a missing data and so um yeah supposing the person forgot supposing you 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 used manual uh face-to-face approach for collecting your data you may have you may have this challenge of missing data but if you use an online approach you can actually evade this this particular challenge because you can instruct google form for example to make sure that if you miss any of the questions you won't be able to submit when you have completed the responses okay you've completed the survey so but if you if you use manual you know chances are that people can actually forget to tick some of this information. so that is why you can have missing information here it is important for you to ensure that people respond to your you know complete your questionnaire or your survey carefully to avoid missing information so so now that you have exported your your data into spss the next thing is to start the analysis that you want to run. But first thing first, you might want to learn whether the, the, this particular scale is reliable. Okay, so in the next tutorial, I'm going to explain to you how you can check reliability of your instrument or of the scale that you are using. If you find this video helpful, please like the video. You can always leave your comments. 
so that i'll be able to learn areas that you have difficulties so i can address them in the next video thank you